The rich history of the parish from the beginning is in fact the story of the community of St. Joseph. The community today certainly draws its strength from the community of yesteryears. The present day community cannot be authentic if it has no history and tradition from which it has come to be. Therefore, know the story is to know the community. The story of the parish presented within the wider story of the world and then Malaya in the context of the historical past. The British government made Klang the administrative capital of the state of Selangor in 1874. Port Klang was the gateway to Malaya and the economic growth in Klang district was booming. During this time, the Chinese who came to Malaya worked in the tin mines and the economy was flourishing in Kuala Lumpur. The Klang and Gombak rivers were the source of the Ewell tin binding business to flourish. The confluence of these two rivers made mud bar and thus Kuala Lumpur was named after these physical features. Kuala Lumpur by this time had become a thriving commercial center. So a directive dated May 1880 from Singapore which decreed that the administrative capital of the state of Selangor be shifted to Kuala Lumpur. Thus, the political change saw an influx of English-speaking Catholics in Kuala Lumpur. The Catholics then had no place to worship. In 1883, Bishop Edward Gasnier, Bishop of the Vicariate of Malaya, sent Father Hector Latessia, a linguist, to Kuala Lumpur to set up the Catholic mission. On 25th July 1885, the Sultan of Selangor, His Highness Sultan Abdul Samad Ibn al Marhum Raja Abdullah, gave the land as a gift to the Roman Catholic community of Selangor. Right Reverend Dr. Edward Gasnier, Bishop of Eukapia, and Father Hector Charles Latassia were named as grantees on the original land document. As Kuala Lumpur developed, a great number of English-speaking Catholics settled in the growing town of Kuala Lumpur. Thus, it gradually became difficult for St. John's Church to focus on the spiritual needs of the faithful. It was at this time, in 1902, it was decided that St. John's Church focus mainly on the English-speaking Catholics. Then, two other churches were built in central Kuala Lumpur to cater for the pastoral needs of the Chinese-speaking and the Tamil-speaking Catholics. In 1903, Holy Rosary Church was built in Brickfields near the Central Railway Station, catered for the pastoral care of the Chinese-speaking Catholics in Kuala Lumpur, Ampang and other surrounding areas in the state of Selangor. Subsequently, a church was built to cater for the Tamil-speaking Catholics. The history of St. Joseph Church in Sentul is made up of events that shaped its growth as a church. The primary event that shaped Sentul was the construction of the Central Railway Workshop in 1903 by the Federated Malay States FMS Railways. The British government approved the Central Railway Workshop to be built in Sentul because of its strategic location. It is about 4.83 kilometers from the Central Railway Station, Kuala Lumpur. The Central Railway Workshop was to repair, maintain locomotives and build carriages. Father Victor Renard, through his wisdom and far-sightedness, acquired a parcel of land for a chapel and school in Central Pasar. In 1906, a small chapel with a three-foot semi-wooden brick wall with Chinese roof tiles was built. The chapel was dedicated to St. Anne in July 1906 because Indians had deeper devotion to St. Anne. Due to the unavailability of missionaries, Eucharistic celebration was held whenever a priest was available. It is reported that celebration of other sacraments were held in St. John's Church. As the Catholic population increased in Sentul, Father Victor Renard and Father Louis Duvel observed that the vast majority of them were workers from the FMS Railway Central Workshop. This led Father Victor Renard to rededicate the Chapel of St. Anne to St. Joseph. Thus, St. Joseph's Chapel took root in Sentul on 15 November 1908 
as a symbol of dignity to the workers in Sentul. In 1911, Father Francois Le Mahak, who was residing at St. John's Church, was appointed parish priest for the entire Indian community in and around Kuala Lumpur and northern Selangor. As planned by Father Louis Duvel, a generous sum of money was given to Father Francois Le Mahak from the Chinese Catholic community in Singapore. Father Louis Duvel himself passed on a substantial amount of money to Father Francois Le Mahak, which he had received from his cousin in France. With this sum of money and with the goodwill of other benefactors, construction works of St. Anthony's Church was initiated with the foundation stone blessed by Bishop Marie Lou Alphonse Emil Berlon on 2 February 1913. Father Louis Duvel blessed the new church on 12 September 1913. This privilege accorded to him in appreciation of his contribution to the Indian Catholic community of Solano. The chapel of St. Joseph in Sentul was devastated by fire in 1912 and was restored in the same year. This time the construction consisted of a chapel and a presbytery to lodge visiting priests. Together with this, a mission Tamil school built adjacent to the chapel met the needs of the children of the railway workers. The pastoral care of the Indian Catholics in Sentul and that of the entire Indian Catholic population in northern Slango, including those in Tanjung Malim Perak and in Kwantan Pahang, came fully under the purview of the Tamil parish of St. Anthony's as visualized by Father Victor Rene in 1902. Although there were five other priests assisting, for the François Le Mahek, the Eucharistic celebrations in the outlying areas like Sentul were scarce. This was due to the vast area covered by the new parish. Therefore, the faithful made their way to St. Anthony's Church for their Sunday worship and all other sacraments were celebrated there. During this time, the Catholic population in Sentul increased due to the progress made by the FMS Railway Central Workshop. Father Francois Le Mahak and his assistants at St. Anthony's Church felt the need to reschedule mass frequencies in Sentul. Among the five, it was decided that Father Francois and his assistant, Father Noel Deridac, take turns to celebrate mass at least once a month in Sentul. A census taken in 1925 by Father Francois Le Mahak indicated that the population of Catholics in Sentul was several hundred. In the same year, a simple but larger Tamil school was erected to replace the school built in 1912. The administration of St. Joseph's Tamil School was given to the Sisters of the Holy Infant Jesus and its first principal was Sister St. Mark. Father Francois Le Mehek's remark, hopefully this school will see the needs of Sentul for many years to come, has come true because that school is still functioning to this day and has an increasing student population. Its status has been upgraded from a mission-funded school to a government-aided mission school. The task for the pastoral care of the Catholics in Sentul fell squarely on the shoulders of Father Victor Antoine Hermann, a hard-working and prudent priest from Germany. Father Hermann and Michael Ponaya, a lay helper from St. Anthony's Church, will celebrate Sunday liturgy and to administer the other sacraments in Sentul. In this process, he got in touch with committed parishioners. I am Anthony, Amy, Victor Maria Das, Emmanuel Fernandez, etc. to organize a fundraising project towards a new church building. The architect was PLM Narvan, who drew the extension plans for the Mother Church St. Anthony's of Kuala Lumpur in 1930. A fundraising campaign was organized and parishioners pledged a month's salary. The blessing of the new church was officiated by Bishop Louis Perichon on Sunday, 28 October 1928. In his report, his Lordship stated, If we had enough priests, one could be posted as resident priest in Sentul. God bless St. Joseph's Church Sentul with Father Ernest Belly as its first resident parish priest in 1938, and with this appointment, he fully celebrated all the sacraments in the parish. The first child baptized by the new parish priest was a boy, christened Suse, on 15 May 1938, whose godparents were Masalamani and Savriamal. 
Father Belly worked tirelessly, nurturing a young parish in the backwaters of Kuala Lumpur, and in the course of his duties, encountered many difficult moments. He mentioned to Joseph Chong that even if St. Joseph himself comes as a parish priest, the people will not still be satisfied. On 24th June 1951 was an important day for the parish of St. Joseph. A great number of people thronged to St. Anthony's Church in Pudu to celebrate and express their gratitude to a remarkable man. Father Victor Antoine Herman, a non-resident priest who helped tremendously in the establishment of the parish of St. Joseph in its infant years. He celebrated his golden jubilee on that day. It was a day to be remembered. In 1952, as construction works were going on, the parish had to prepare for a remarkable event. The pilgrim statue of Our Lady of Fatima from Portugal arrived in Kuala Lumpur. The Church of St. Joseph was given the honor and privilege to have the sacred statue exposed for veneration. The wardens and the legionaries worked out on an elaborate program for the occasion. A motorcade comprising of some 20 to 30 motorbikes led the statue in procession, starting from the Ipo Road Junction near Central Police Station to the church. The people, including non-Catholics, took part in the procession. The church was overflowing with people, a sight never seen before. After the service, the crowd that aligned to venerate the statue was overwhelming. All main churches in Malaya were given an opportunity to experience the joy of exposing the relic of St. Francis Xavier in their relevant parishes. In 1953, soon after the extension of the both wings and the front of the church, once again God's blessing was upon this parish when this great event took place. Catholics and many others of different religions venerated the arm of St. Francis Xavier before it was sent to Rome. Father Pio de Croix, an expelled missionary, experienced persecution at the hands of the Red Guards of Communist China. He was sent as an assistant parish priest to St. Joseph's in the year 1953 and to learn Tamil. However, his heart was still with the Chinese community because he had spent the first three years of his early priesthood working among the Chinese Catholics at the Church of the Immaculate Conception in Kunming Province, China. He started to study a new Chinese dialect, Cantonese, and began working with the Chinese youths in Jinjiang. In 1954, Father Pierre de Croix left Sentul for Holy Rosary Church in Brickfields, a Chinese-based parish in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, as an assistant priest. He started missionary work among the Mandarin and Chinese-speaking laity. The last Mass celebrated by Father Ernest Bailey before his departure was on a Sunday. The attendance at this Mass was well represented by the parishioners. Dr. Selwyn, a close associate of Father Ernest Bailey, recorded this service on scene camera. This was something amazing to the parishioners at that time. At this Mass, Father Anthony Michael, the new parish priest, was accorded a warm welcome. After Mass, the congregation gathered at Our Lady's Grotto for a group photograph session. Father John Edmonds soon joined Father Anthony Michael as assistant parish priest. In 1955, Father Anthony Michael appealed to the diocese in Malacca for permission to purchase a new car for the parish. Sooner then said, a gleaming new black Austin of England was parked for the first time at the porch of the presbytery bearing a BE5517 number plate. Father Anthony Michael took great care of the car. In the same year, Father introduced a simple public address system in the church. He removed the pulpit used by Father Ernest Ballet at the front right side of the church. Father Anthony Michael was very concerned about the discipline of the servers. There was a dress code, a tie with long sleeves shirt. He expected them to be neatly attired for Sunday service. The parish priest reprimanded servers who did not observe the dress code. Servers not serving on any Sundays or feast days had to be at the choir. Father Anthony Michael took a keen interest in the choir. He had Anthony as choir master, assisted by Stanislaus Paiva. Joseph Emmanuel, a teacher from St. John's Institution, was the music conductor in the choir. Father made it a point to be present at most of the choir practices and introduce new hymns. 
St. Joseph's Church made history again when Father Anthony Michael was appointed as chairman of the organizing committee for the installation of Bishop-elect Reverend Dominic Bendagan on Sunday, 21st August 1955. Father John Edmund, assistant parish priest, was transferred to Ipoh and was replaced by Father Joseph Rutens in the same year in Sentul. Father Rutens was young and a favorite among the youths of the parish. He was artistic and talented in many subjects, namely mathematics, health science and geography. He spent time with the youths tutoring them in their weak subjects and on Saturday nights he would gather the boys in the presbytery to tell those ghost stories that he had written. He even bought them a pair of boxing gloves and taught them boxing as a game. He had a passion for miniature model trains. He got the permission of the parish priest to turn the upstairs lounge of the presbytery into a model town with railway tracks and railway stations. His sermons were well prepared and the best of the sermons were the ones he delivered on the explanation of the Ten Commandments. Father Swaminathan Savary commenced his administration of the parish in 1958, Father Swaminathan Savary initiated the Novena devotion to Our Lady of Perpetual Succor. Novenas were held on Saturday evenings, followed by benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. The church would be packed for this service. Father Gilbert Griffon saw the pathetic living conditions of the railway quarters of the Industrial and Manual Group. He was much disturbed. He observed that the area was a breeding ground for gangsters and other illicit activities. He was aware that most of the youths in this area were under police observation. He made up his mind to bring some peace to this area by changing the lifestyle of the youths irrespective of religious beliefs. Father Swaminathan noted the need to set up a private school to aid the Standard Six and form three dropouts from government schools, open a co-ed school with five classrooms at the back of the church. Even though there were a number of private schools in Sentul, yet schools run by the church were much sought after because of the commitment, discipline and guidance offered by the schools. The changes in education policy in Malaysia then brought about the closure of the school. In mid-1962, Father Swaminathan was transferred to Our Lady of Fatima in Brickfields. Father Pierre Bretero was appointed parish priest. The Catholic Church had its changes following the Second Vatican Ecumenical Council convened in Rome by Pope John XXIII from 1963 to 1965, had its intention and purpose to highlight the Church's apostolic and pastoral mission and by making the truth of the Gospel shine to lead all to seek and receive Christ's love which surpasses all knowledge. In mid-1965, Father Laurent Le Guen was appointed assistant parish priest. Father Gilbert Griffon and his new assistant had many ideas in common and could cooperate as a team in all areas of parish work. Together with a formidable volunteer workforce of 110 legionaries and 108 YCW members, they embarked on a plan to awaken the estate workers to answer the call of the gospel. The YCW, both English and Tamil, become the real apostles of the estates. They trained and educated them to approach their many social difficulties and employment grievances in the light of the gospel. With impulse sustained from the tandem, Griffon de Guen, St. Joseph's being one of the bigger parishes in the diocese, developed its missionary outreach program in a three-pronged approach. One, religious information. Two, resolutely true to gospel social actions and three, missionary in outlook. On 8 January 1966, Reverend Deacon Edward Xavier Suse was a Dane priest in a simple ceremony in the company of the clergy, relatives and friends. The celebration of the ordination was officiated by His Lordship, Bishop Dominic Van Dagen, thus placing our first jewel in the crown of the Diocese of Kuala Lumpur. On 19 January 1966, His Lordship Bishop Dominic Aloysius Mindagan 
St. Rev. Father Michael G. Pinto, who was ordained at the Church of Assumption on 2nd January to St. Joseph's Church, Sentul, as assistant parish priest. In 1967, His Lordship Bishop Dominic Bendagan sent Father Michael G. Pinto to Sabah to study Bahasa Malaysia under Father Peter DeWitt, a Bahasa specialist. Upon his return, Father Michael G. Pinto celebrated the whole Mass in Bahasa Malaysia for the first time in Sentul and Diocese of Kuala Lumpur. Though the response of the laity to the spiritual movement of renewal was encouraging, but some murmurs of dissent were heard amongst the traditionals. After his tenure of service at St. Joseph's as parish priest, Father Gilbert Griffon returned to France for a short holiday in 1967. His Lordship, Bishop Dominic Bendagan, then appointed Father Lorraine de Gwen as parish priest. St. Joseph being a very large parish of about 8,000 Catholics, of whom 3,000 were scattered in the rubber estates of Northern Selangor and Pahang, and the rest were widely distributed in the environs of Sentul. To meet the growing demand of the parish, Bishop of Kuala Lumpur sent Father Anthony Thomas as assistant parish priest. He is a man of varied talents with a keen interest in liturgy and spirituality. He was known as the man of few words. Father Anthony Thomas succeeded Father Pinto in July 1971. He maneuvered the parish out of the dark clouds that hung over her. He did not allow any parishioner with negative values to become stumbling blocks for the growth of the parish. With the help of a dedicated group of parishioners, he put the church back into order with unparalleled initiative. In 1974, the Archbishop of Kuala Lumpur sent Father Anthony Soto Fernandez, Rector of College General Major Seminary, Father Pierre Bretador and Brother Augustin Julian, Sister Selina Lowe, IJ, Sister Eilish Cafe, IJ, Sister Jane Coe, FMM and Sister Grace Lee, DSP. Five representatives from religious congregations were sent to study the documents of the Second Vatican Council at the East Asian Pastoral Institute in Manila. They studied the documents under the able guidance of 25 eminent professors and returned to Malaysia in 1975. They were then summoned by the Archbishop to organize a study program for the clergy and religious entitled Ajornamento. They came up with a document called Five Loaves and Two Fish, which became a transforming factor for the Peninsular Malaysia Church. In August 1976, a total of 126 personnel comprising of bishops, clergy and religious representatives attended this historic event, Ajonamento, at College General Penang. The Latin word Ajonamento means updating in the English language. Father Thomas left the parish to take up his post as lecturer at College General. In May 1982, Father A. Amalanathan was posted as parish priest. During his term of service, a certified land surveyor was employed to survey the entire church land. After a short stay in Sentul, he left the parish in September 1982. In 1994, Father Suse foresees the need for a new parish in the north district of Kuala Lumpur to serve the Catholics living in Salayang, Sri Gombak and Batu Caves in Selango. He formed an ad hoc team comprising of himself, Father Edwin Paul and Louis Kanu. They were to look for a suitable site and anyone knowing of a prospective dealer was requested to inform them. In June 2001, Father Ferdinand was appointed parish priest. For the first time in the parish, an installation of a parish priest was celebrated on 16 June 2001. The parish prepared an elaborate program, but the Archbishop advised the committee for a simple celebration. A dinner was held and he was shrouded with a golden shawl as a mark of appreciation and respect. The first meeting of the various ministries with Archbishop Murphy Pakiam was held on 27th January 2005. He noted down the particulars of the various committee members of PPC, BCOT and PFC. He expressed disappointment at the lack of representatives during the pastoral visits as the parish is made up of 12 zones and 42 BCs. Father Stanislaus was appointed as parish priest of St. Joseph's Church on 1st September 2005. He associated with the parishioners and got himself acquainted. This was followed by a series of talks, group sharing and discernment. The group formulated a new vision and mission statement for the parish, which is Vision, a united and caring community. 
Mission. We, the people of God in St. Joseph Church, witness Christ's presence in our basic ecclesial communities, working together as a united and caring community, deeply rooted in the Word of God. The grand finale of the feast will be the Eucharistic celebration by Archbishop Murphy Parkim at 6 p.m. on the 4th of May 2008 to be followed by candlelight procession and a laser show for the parishioners of St. Joseph's Church to cherish. <laughs>